that's kind of where the magic happens. Howdy, and welcome back to the Wild Business Growth Podcast, presented by Hippo Direct. This is your destination to hear from a new entrepreneur or creative innovator every single week who's unleashing creativity to grow bigger and better businesses. I'm your host, Max Branstetter, digital marketing dude here at Hippo Direct, and this is episode number 17. Today, we have an entrepreneur for you, just to throw some buzzwords around. He's a digital entrepreneur at Adobe. His name is Joe Martin. He's the head of social analytics, but you may know him as being the dad joke king on Twitter. This episode has some of everything. We talk about some behind the scenes of what it's like working at Adobe and how they stay so creative as a company and even on Joe's digital team. You can learn some tricks for better brainstorming and how to come up with creative new ideas. And you can even get some tips on some things that won't guarantee you go viral on Twitter, but may just improve your chances of going viral on Twitter or some other social media sites. There's the whole kit and caboodle on this episode, so enjoy the show. Alrighty, today we have a super exciting guest, one of my favorite people in the world to follow on Twitter. We have the man Joe Martin from Adobe with us here today. How are you doing today, Joe? Yes, great to, great to be here. Been connected forever on Twitter. Nice to just chat a little bit. Of course. Yeah, thanks for coming on. From, starts with Twitter, gets to the podcast world next. We'll probably start our own talk show that takes over <laughs> the world. So, <laughs> but sense. yeah, exactly. Joe Martin, Joe D. Marty, 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 on, Marty. Uh, yep. Marty, there you go. Okay, uh, drop the end on Twitter. He's the head of social analytics at Adobe, working out of their Utah office, and he's just absolutely the man. He's been featured in Wall Street Journal, New York Times, and more for his marketing expertise. And as you mentioned, has a lot of fun stuff on Twitter about Adobe, about marketing in general, and even a lot of fun stuff about his family and his kids. So before I take up this whole hour or so, Joe, would you mind going in a little detail about what you've done up to what you're doing now? Yeah. Around the time I was going to planning on going back to get an MBA, the recession hit. It was in 07 that I'd kind of committed to going back to school and started in 08. So I chose the University of Utah over a couple of other schools, mainly because I thought there was some potential there. Um, I'd already been to that school and also it was just a lot cheaper. Uh, I didn't want to come out of school with a ton of debt when I knew we were going to be in the middle of a recession. Right. So I went to school, got an MBA, finished uh, two years after I started, and then worked for like a small startup, um, Neutron Interactive. And I chose that company over Amazon and a couple of others because I wanted to have a bigger impact initially when I was kind of learning what I really liked about in marketing. Right. And that's the nice thing about a, a small company is that you kind of get to wear you know a ton of hats and be involved in a lot of things versus a big company. You're very much more a specialist and they kind of, you know, both have goods and bads to them. Right. Yeah. And I have like 14 different hats I wear every single day, <laughs> both physically and uh, business-wise. <laughs> yeah, that would be a sight to see. Thank you. I'll post a picture later. <laughs> So I was at Neutron for about two years. I did various roles in marketing and strategy. Got recruited for, to Adobe for this really cool opportunity. It was for this team called the Adobe Digital Insights Team. And if you haven't seen it already, they just released their holiday prediction report mm -hmm. yesterday. So the news was crazy yesterday about how much people are going to spend on Black Friday and Cyber Monday and when is the best time to buy your TV and your jewelry and toys? That was my team for five, almost five years. Wow. You shared that on LinkedIn, right? Yeah, I did. Yep. Great stuff. So me and a, a couple of other people here founded that team, kind of built it up. And that's where I got the opportunity to be, you know, quoted a lot in press outlets. And I got to do some fun reports and kind of built up some following that way. Wow. I see. Not to brag. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that was, that was kind of, I mean, that was a really just great opportunity is really grateful for it. Um, it was a great way to, to launch my career in kind of the enterprise business. Mm -hmm. So I'll always kind of look fondly back on that team. Um, I still get involved with them a lot. And um, my boss, I still I actually, she's the one that I do the podcast with Tamara Gaffney. Mm -hmm. So her and I still meet a lot and talk. And so oh, about two years ago, I was approached about kind of starting a new team. We'd always kind of had social listening in Adobe with like brand monitoring and crisis management things, you know, with, with such a big brand, you have to make sure that things don't blow up. Uh, people are always complaining about <laughs> us and talking good about us also, but right. you try and keep those, those bad things contained as much as possible and make sure that people are satisfied with the product and that type of stuff. Right. We'd always done that, but there was a piece that we hadn't done, which was using all this, this vast data for research, for consumer understanding. Mm -hmm. So I kind of pitched the idea of using this social data as a way to, to understand our consumers better and, and develop our products and our strategy. And, and there's a competitive intelligence angle to it as well. And so I kind of got the the open highway to run with that <laughs> and build the team. And that's what I've been doing for the last two years is just very strategically focused and providing insight insights to a lot of different teams from the social data that we get. Let's dive into Adobe a little bit and what you're doing there. Some of the stuff you mentioned there. First thing there, you, you started basically departments started new things within Adobe and Adobe obviously is, a massive company, one of the leaders in the marketing space out there and, and tech space and just an iconic company. And you're tasked with creating new things and creating new departments within that organization. What's that like being a more entrepreneur as, you know, the, the sexy word that they say? Sure. Is, what's that like innovating within a giant company? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. There's a lot more relationship building that you need to do. I mean, when mm -hmm. you're kind of building, when you're building a business or you're an entrepreneur within a company that has 20,000 plus employees, you kind of need to find the stakeholders that are really going to help you to grow. So it's, it's almost like when you're, you're bit a business, you're looking to find funding. And so you're building relationships that way. And then uh, you're trying to find customers. And when you're building a program, like the two that I've helped build here, no, I needed to get the people in creative on board and the people in PR on board and engineering was a key piece because they mm -hmm. have access to the data. And so you kind of need to build a little bit of credibility for yourself initially by doing some good work for a year or two even. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of, after a year or so, you figured out who, who owns what and how the organizations are structured. And that's how you kind of learn how to navigate the big company. It was kind of funny. Like, <laughs> so I was in grad school and I was interviewing with um, Disney and I was in the final interview with Disney mm -hmm. um, for a position. And I'd never had like big company experience. I'd always kind of worked for small businesses. And, and like I had mentioned that this was in the middle of the recession. So there's a ton of competition for, for positions. And I'm interviewing with the VP of, you know, I don't even remember what the role was, but <laughs> um, one of her questions was, you no, know, it doesn't look like you've ever worked with a big company before. And I said, no, no, I haven't. And obviously I deflected that by, you know, talking about how I was good with relationship building and right. Yeah. Classic. You know, uh, whatever, whatever I, it's, it's, right. Spin move there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I, I turned it into something, you know, because that's right. mm -hmm. part of an MBA is they tr teach you how to interview well. Yeah. Well, thank God you're on this podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that, I think, you know, among other things, like one of the things is at the end, she kind of was pretty frank with me and just said, hey, I have people that have 10 years experience that, you know, want this role and I might mm -hmm. have to go with one of them. Right. But that was also a knock and I didn't really understand it at the time. Like, oh, I can figure out a big company, you know, it's, it's not, it's not that big of a deal, but there, there is a little bit of an art to it. 
um, for good or bad. You have to kind of learn how to create those relationships and, and sell your idea internally so that people kind of help you. And, and I've yeah. been able to have some good mentors that have taught me how to kind of navigate that. Mm. But it is, it is definitely something that, that can be a, a barrier if you're, if you're not kind of building that skill. Oh, totally. Yeah. And I think that applies in big organizations. It applies in smaller and, and we'll give some luck to medium sized organizations as well. So do you yeah. have any uh, relationships are so important and sort of selling your idea and selling yourself, as you mentioned, was crucial to what you've been doing. Do you have any tips to share out for our listeners here for ways to do that ways to establish and, you know, foster those relationships and also sort of your cred with the company? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think face to face is is fantastic. So, you know, I, I I'm in the Utah office, but our headquarters is in San Jose. So before I this is this is now I've kind of learned this over the years, being here almost seven years, but yeah. before I launch a big product or not a product, a new kind of project I'm working on, if I haven't met that person before, I go out and do a face to face with them. I think there's so much value in having that initial interaction be face to face. And right. I, f- I feel like the people that I met after I met them face to face, things went a lot smoother. There was less follow up for me to get things I needed. There's almost like you create that connection point that they see you as a person versus kind of just a email name that keeps asking for stuff. Right. And, and you can kind of, I'm, I'm, a, I'm better face to face as well at getting people kind of on board with what I'm trying to accomplish. Mm-hmm. So also have a, the next thing would kind of be have a well thought out story. Like why does it matter? Why does whatever you're trying to do matter? How does it benefit them? And talk about how you're going to, you know, make sure that you always give credit to people that helped you. Right, so that yeah. they can they can kind of feel like they have some ownership, and also they'll know that you're not just going to steal whatever they provided to you and and just say you did it all yourself. Oh yeah, I think there's a ton of value in in making sure there's attribution for you know credit where credit is due. I guess is kind of the oh, yeah. phrase. Absolutely, yeah, you have to pay it back. And I know you know, unfortunately, we are only able to do this interview remote today, not face to face, but. I think you'll be happy to know I have a life-size figurine of you that I'm staring at. In my place. So it's, it's, kind of, it's basically like we're uh, face-to-face for this interview. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so on, uh, to get on less creepy topics, so are you, <laughs> how, uh, what's it like working at Adobe in general? Like what are your favorite parts of working there? Because it's, again, it's iconic. It's, a very, it's one of the leaders in business and – really it's just such an innovative company. And I know you guys have made a couple recent acquisitions that are huge. Yeah. Yeah. So we just added Magento in May and then Marketo officially closed yesterday. Wow. Yeah. No, there we go. Two days ago, Halloween <laughs> closed on Halloween. There we go. Super excited to add those two. They're fantastic companies. I think they're going to add a lot to the experience cloud. I'm, I'm not the perfect person to, to go deeper on any of those things but <laughs> yeah, they can be a foreign language to a lot of yeah. people right? <laughs> i love those companies though i've admired them from afar for a very long time so adobe is creative to the core it's all over our office you know like our i'll probably post this soon but like our elevator doors have really beautiful like images on them that were created with photoshop or um, illustrator or whatever Wow. Mm-hmm. We, we have you know, art all over our offices, uh, lots of creativity. Peep, there's almost like a pressure to create really nice looking PowerPoints that tell a, tell a story <laughs> and kind of have beautiful imagery. It really just kind of exudes what, what the products we sell are, which I appreciate. The culture is, is good. It's very West Coast tech culture that you would expect, but also is also right. conservative. I mean, it's been, a, it's one of the more longer tenure tech companies since the eighties. Mm-hmm. Are you telling me uh, it's been around longer than Facebook and Twitter? Have? What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, it is one of the more longer tenured companies with people staying here. 
we have some pretty cool benefits around like if you've been here for five years, you get a sabbatical for a month, a uh, paid sabbatical, which I just, I just took in the summer, which was really nice. Oh, congrats. Well, welcome back. <laughs> yeah, thank you. We have holiday shutdowns over the 4th of July and two weeks. Or it's usually a week and a half for Christmas that our office just shuts down. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Nobody's really asking for anything. It's really pretty respected. And then just all the kind of tech things you would expect. Like our, my building has a full gym and a basketball court and cafe. Wow. Are you we playing have... basketball right now? Like, <laughs> yes, I am. During, I, I thought I heard some back. dribbling. It was like, yep. that, that explains so much. <laughs> and the big echo. Yeah, I heard um, a 360 <laughs> between the legs dunk actually in the yeah. background. Yeah. I did that on an eight foot hoop the other day with my kids. So <laughs> oh my God. That, oh, I have so much nostalgia <laughs> now from growing up and playing. Oh, we, we called it low hoop. You just put it yeah, down oh, yeah. really low so yeah. everybody can dunk. And, uh-huh. you, know, you know, those of us that can't dunk normally, I mean, I can dunk blindfolded, but like, you know, those of you that can't dunk on a 10 foot hoop, I'm just kidding. <laughs> in, in, bas- in a college, we used to go to an elementary with me and my roommates. Oh, that, yeah. Uh, had like eight and a half to nine foot hoops <laughs> and we would we would play dunk ball like every saturday morning it was a lot of fun oh god that's a blast yeah i used to <laughs> used to whip out the trampoline as well when yeah. slam when slam ball got big totally yeah <laughs> it's a it's a great company i'm i'm always you know i'd be lucky to be here my my whole career mm-hmm. i'm grateful for the opportunities i've been given and let's just say there's a lot of people that come back that do leave so there's a lot of, we call them boomerangers, right. <laughs> but they leave, they get some more experience outside, which I think is valuable. Yeah. And then they, they come back at, you know, a different level and, and are able to provide some, some insight. So I think it's pretty cool that, that there's this culture that kind of draws people back after they leave. Right. Yeah. And I think it's really, really neat how you said creativity to the core, like creativity is such a big pillar, I guess, or a big thing to focus on for Adobe. And the things that you mentioned of that kind of like any employee in the company can see that like the, the designs that you're talking about and sort of the impact of the PowerPoint. How do you take that creativity? That's sort of a, a theme for the company overall. How do you take that and funnel that to your team specifically? Like, how do you keep your team inspired in your specific team to be thinking and doing more things creatively? Because it's such a important disruptor in business. I feel like at a company like Adobe, people come in and almost expect that. So I think there's already like some groundwork laid right. that, you know, we're, you're coming into this brilliant creative company that everybody knows. And so you kind of, everybody's games are elevated a little bit, just coming into the company and what the culture has already been established. We have typical things that you'd expect, like we do weekly stand-up meetings where we kind of just do some pass downs from higher up. And then we're always like doing brainstorms and things that will kind of inspire new creative, creative thought. I, I just finished a program at Stanford that was a year program. It took me four years to do, but one of the classes was design thinking, Mm -hmm. which is, you know, pretty big buzzword right now, but. Yeah, you got me excited for, there. For for good reason though. I mean, it's it's just all about like just doing. This this design thing is really much more of a, like a prototype if you're building an actual product. You just right. kind of build it, you know, really rough and then figure out the details later. But mm-hmm. it inspired it inspired a idea that I've implemented with a couple of other people over the last year. Um, I call it the social swarm. Mm-hmm. Basically, I bring in people from different orgs. So sales and strategy and uh, product and engineering and marketing and comms. And I have this structured brainstorm Mm. in the past. It's been around kind of coming up with the next great social activation that Adobe is going to do to kind of benefit my org. (laughs) It's, it's pretty fun. Like we have, we have some games in place, like, some themes like we had a starburst theme because it was a starburst brainstorm where you have kind of five points of the star what what why what why where when and how and we did this a couple weeks ago but i gave them the headline of the of the program so 
like let's say the name of this program is Adobe DNA. What is the what and the how behind this program? And then they get, you know, three to five minutes to kind of write down their own ideas. So you don't have one person dominating the conversation. Right. Yep. And then we stand around the whiteboard and everyone kind of posts their ideas up. And that's kind of where the magic happens. Like the first person goes over their idea and 45 minutes suddenly go past and you realize you've been riffing with each other, you know, six other people on one idea. And then you kind <laughs> of, you know, get through the rest of the ideas. Right. Yeah. And then I, I kind of flesh them out a little bit more, but it's, it's super fun to kind of see the energy that that creates with, with bringing in, you know, someone who's looking at code and engineering all day and suddenly gets to kind of use a different part of his brain or her brain for coming up with a marketing program. Right. And you're not just having people in comms or marketing that have, have done this before and are like, Oh, that'll never work. You know, it's pretty cool that it's been a pretty fun thing to, to develop and, and integrate that kind of comes from desire to be more creative, come up with new things and something I've implemented with, with my team that I work with. I love that. And I love a huge brainstorming fan myself, but I think it could be a super huge value to anyone. Can you go a little bit more into some more of the principles and sort of the things that you outlined before you get started brainstorming? Because you mentioned the, one of those is everybody writes down the ideas themselves first and then goes up and kind of puts them on the whiteboard and talks about it. What other principles yeah. do you keep to that brainstorming? Yeah. So I, I read a whole bunch of articles and some books when I was kind of developing this. Um, and I had some, my own ideas of what I thought was good about a brainstorm, what I thought stunk about a brainstorm. <laughs> um, and, and I just kind of put these pieces together. And one of the things was called brain writing, which was the, you know, I gave everyone sticky notes and pencils or, or pens when they walked in, they were sitting there at their table at their seat. And that idea was that it kind of puts everybody on the same plane. I mean, you have a lot of passive and active people in meetings. And so if you don't kind of let the passive people get their ideas down, then you're going to have two or three people just kind of dominate the conversation and you won't get those great ideas from those other people. Right. Yeah. So brain writing creates that opportunity for people to just write their ideas down and then you go one by one and kind of eventually get to them so they can have their voice. And it's mm -hmm. kind of cool how there's been a couple of people that I know are kind of a little bit more quiet that I've invited to these sessions and I've had them go first or second. And I feel like that kind of charges them up to kind of give their input with the other ideas. Right. Yeah. I guess they're, gets their, their battery, their energizer bunny going full yeah, speed. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, the other thing was a takeaway. Uh, yeah. I learned this, I learned this in sales. I don't remember the stat or where it was from, but I know <laughs> we implemented this when I was working in a sales org where customer satisfaction was X percent higher if, if they got something at the end. So mm. when we were, when I was working in real estate in development or, or, you know, on the residential side or commercial side, we'd always give, give uh, little gifts along the way to the people. It could have been like a, a puzzle that was kind of tied to them, you know, signing mm -hmm. their offer or whatever. Um, but they got little takeaways along the way. And we kind of implemented that because of that, that stat. So everyone got, you know, in this last case, everyone had a, got Starburst because it was, you know, themed. Right, yeah. <laughs> Natural tie there. yeah. There was one time that I did a, a SWAT analysis. And so I had like donuts and like a, a police theme. <laughs> okay. Which yeah. Which was kind of fun. <laughs> you had the theme music playing on the background. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Everyone had some <laughs> theme music. Had the like, everyone got police badges, like those cop, the, the play toy ones from you know, all a dollar or whatever, Dollar oh, Tree. Uh, I'm picturing uh, Chris Chris Pratt from Parks and Rec. When totally. This. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Exactly like that. And it just kind of makes it more fun. And it, it also shows, I think it shows some structure and like adds some mm -hmm. credibility that to the program. So right. that's kind of worked out pretty well. And I, I just try and change, if I have the same people, I try and change the theme each time. 
um, and the style oh, yeah. of the brainstorm. And there's a bunch that have been thought out styles of a brainstorm and you can kind of just cherry pick off, off of those that have been created by people much smarter than me. Uh, well, I don't think that's possible, Joe, but maybe we'll <laughs> do a cherry picking theme brainstorm next. <laughs> yeah. Hi, this is Greg Brandstetter, founder of Hippo Direct. Has all this wild growth talk made you hungry for some new customers? Well, here's your recipe for success. Hippo Direct can help you acquire new clients using proven methods such as postal mailings, email marketing, and targeted ads on Google, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We can even create a customized leads and prospecting database for you. So check out hippodirect.com and contact us today. Can you speak more about you personally? like? What do you do to stay creative? And this is not not just at work, but it could be outside of work too. Like what you know, hobbies you do, how you spend your free time. What do you do to keep your mind fresh and keep you the smartest person in the world? As I just coined, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but I, you know, first of all, I have an awesome wife who is is always making me better, helping critique when I don't do things the best way. And kind of holding me to a higher standard, which I really appreciate in a way that only a spouse could, right? Right. If you heard that some things from some other people, you may be like offended by it. But um, I, I appreciate what Right. And that was a very nice way of, of saying that she criticizes you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's where we're, it's a safe spot. And it's, it's right. really, I appreciate it. We've been together for, been married for almost 13 years so it's it's wow. uh, been a long Congrats. time together yeah thank you um i love to just hang out with my kids and my family mm -hmm. it's so much fun i mean we had halloween the other night that was a blast it kind of just went around the neighborhood we had you know chili for dinner and kids had their costumes i feel like i don't have to try to be creative because i have little kids that are just always coming up with new things oh um, yeah you know, I have yeah, three, cute. three kids under five. And so <laughs> they're just always coming up with new games and kind of trying, obviously wanting me to be involved with their games. And sometimes I just, I always play with them when they come up with their games, but sometimes I like just observing and like just seeing <laughs> you know, when, when does that spark get lost? Right. When do we lose that magic of, of a little kid that's just always imagining? Right. Oh my God. You have your own focus groups all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. Yeah, totally. yeah. But it's so true. Like you hear it all the time and we've had previous podcasts get like Brendan, uh, my old digital directors our second guest. And he said right away with creativity, think like a child, like keep thinking yeah. like a child because it's, it's so big and it's great. You have your kids there and you, they do the, they do like the creativity grunt work for you. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, they're always coming up with new stuff and, yeah, it's it's just super fun. I I read books a lot, and I'm always kind of observing what other companies are doing. <laughs> I I meet with peers in other companies, mm -hmm. so people that are you know I've talked with people running listening at ESPN and Microsoft and other things you know analytics and and kind of talk with them and kind of commiserate with them a little bit on on some of the things you know we struggle with and and ways right. to kind of get better. Right. For books, I, and I know you just tweeted literally this answer out, but <laughs> yeah. for, for books, what are your favorite books of all time? Oh, all time? That's that's yeah. tough. I I don't know. I don't know that I have one that I just always want to go back to. Mm -hmm. I have some, a bunch that I've, and this is what I tweeted out this morning that <laughs> yeah shout out shout out joe d marty on twitter <laughs> yeah this is what i've enjoyed reading this year there's one called the power of habit i actually read this um a couple of years ago i bought it at the airport and read it on the plane um and kind of implemented a couple of things from it and i actually was terrible at biting my nails that was one of my oh, yeah. issues that i had Mm -hmm. And yeah. I totally broke, broke that habit after reading this book and I haven't bit my nails in like wow. oh, no, two years. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your <laughs> so nails are looking of, great, man. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> There's a new book that just came out called the messy middle. Um, it's by Scott Belsky, who was the founder of Behance and is mm -hmm. our current chief product officer here at Adobe. I just kind of started jumping into that. So I'm excited. I've met him a couple of times and, and enjoyed seeing him on stage at Max. And so I think mm -hmm. he's got a lot of 
value oh, to have there. My favorite conference. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you everybody, everybody will have to guess why it's my favorite conference. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. I'll hop on that first jet. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? Oh, I loved the book Grit. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, that was fantastic. This I read that this year. I would say probably for the most part, I'm 70, 30 on like business, whatever, uh, improvement right. books to just like casual reading. Do you have a favorite casual or I guess we'll put in the all over the place category book that comes uh, to mind? The, the two I read this year were One Second After, which was pretty concerning. It was basically if, if like an EMP went off kind of shows the breakdown in society wow yeah that's uh, that's got to be interesting yeah it was, it was a book that when um newt gingrich was speaker of the house right he bought a copy for all of congress to read oh wow i think i don't know when that was but it's been out a long time but it was really it was super interesting and then murder on the orient express I've never actually read that by agatha christie Mm-hmm. And I, I yeah. read it before the movie came out. The movie was actually pretty good as well. Awesome. All right. Well, I'll have to check those out. Our listeners will have to check them out as well and, and yeah. give, you, give you a full book report on each of those. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> Let's talk about your social media presence and sort of the background of that. And for again, for anybody that doesn't follow you, you got to follow Joe DiMarty on Twitter. I mean, you're brighten up the timeline every single day. And I think you do a really good mix of, of business stuff, of marketing stuff, of entertaining stuff in general and comedy, whether you're trying to be funny or not. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot, and probably a lot of that comes from your kids as well. There's a oh, lot yeah, of totally. dad stuff and family stuff there. So first part there, how do you approach Twitter? Like how do you view it as a platform or how do you view, you know, when you're thinking of tweets or, you know, quote unquote content to put out there? Twitter's kind of like the water cooler a little bit, uh, <laughs> yeah. modern day water cooler, right. <laughs> but it, it's just a fun place where you can kind of, it really, for the most part, it's really just people's random thoughts, right? I mean, it's like, yeah, which is fascinating. I, itself. I just thought this and I don't know, maybe some other people might think it was a funny thought or whatever. <laughs> um <laughs> that's a great way to that's that's twitter in its simplest form that's <laughs> totally um it's also you know i love it for sports and for entertainment i mean when oh, yeah. there's nothing better when it's like a big sporting event and for me it's like utah football and the pac-12 the games are always at you know like nine o'clock at night right eight thirty or nine so right my wife likes football, likes watching it with me, but she'll, you know, stay up until 10 or 1030. And then she's like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go to bed. And so now I'm like stuck there by myself at 11 <laughs> o'clock at night watching this game. And if something awesome happens, I'm like high fiving myself or like jumping up and <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can like jump on Twitter and kind of engage with other people, right. That are, yeah. that are watching it so oh totally yeah and there's always there's always especially if it's a big game like that there's going to be millions of people that have instant reactions like i love the real-time aspect of it it's it's unparalleled yeah totally what about you i mean what's what's kind of your your love yeah yeah so i first got the first time i heard of twitter i was in high school at the time and uh my friend john was and because I, I was kind of a late adopter to Facebook and I actually never had a MySpace, believe it or not. So I, I was kind of a late adopter to some of these things. And then my friend John was saying that like he'd interacted with, <laughs> it was Eric Snow at the time, the NBA point guard, but he was, yeah. I think he was, he was either on, I think he was on the Cavs at the time or recently on the Cavs and he interacted with him. And then another one of my friends was personally connected with Shaq based, kind of went back and forth a few times on Twitter. And that was the first time I was like, holy cow, it's like a way to connect with people that you never think you could connect with. And then once I started trying it out and getting active on it, I was like, I love Twitter for, well, one, I'm, I'm kind of naturally, oh, this is a huge brag, but no, naturally witty slash <laughs> witty slash corny. So like I, there's a lot of things that I'll just have those random thoughts, as you mentioned, and I'll put out there and sometimes people just shake their heads. Sometimes people are like, okay, you know what? That was actually pretty witty. Yeah. But 
I like it for that aspect, but I really love it for the sports aspect, as you mentioned, and the comedy aspect, and also for like the creative marketing aspect, because there's so many different campaigns out there and so many different new things and new technology that sort of Twitter just naturally based on the fact of things can go viral and gain steam. It kind of brings some of those cooler ideas to the forefront and it's a really good aggregator or curator, if you will, for all those ideas. And, you know, of course all the just really funny and clever tweets people have. And it's, I mean, any big sports moment, it's like you have to go to Twitter to see the reactions. And I'm still amazed by how many sort of, how quick the designers are out there these days and putting together memes because memes are like instant as well these days. Man, yeah, it's, I'm telling you, it's got to be Photoshop mix. There's like a mobile app and I use it all the time. (laughs) I'm terrible at it, but I can like whip up (laughs) some stuff, you know, in a couple of minutes. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's it is pretty crazy how quickly, especially like the gifs. I mean, that yeah. I don't even know how to make that happen, but uh, <laughs> they'll come up with the gifs oh, and know. have like a funny movie moment or whatever, and replace the heads with whoever is trending, and it's just yeah. awesome. Yeah. Have you always said gifs, or was it not until the gif creator said it was pronounced that way that you switched over and pronounced it that way? Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> I've kind of gone back and forth. I, I no, it's, well, sometimes people think you're talking about peanut butter and I'm like, no, that doesn't make sense. So. <laughs> yeah. I think it, I think it probably was when the creator said that I, I yeah. jumped on board with whatever they were saying. <laughs> so. It's your personal brand. That's, that's big on Twitter and sort of, you said it got bigger as you were featured in all these major outlets. How do you manage your content between how much you're talking about, Joe Martin and the world of Joe Martin verse is specifically Adobe things. I would say it's, it's probably for the most part, just, just me. If I look at all my content and split it up and kind of had a nice little pie chart, I'd say it'd probably be like 30% Adobe stuff. Mm-hmm. For the most part, it's like Adobe life, you know, like cool events that are happening or like fun things I see around the building and, Right. I'll, I'll snap a picture and kind of, you know, put up Adobe Live. Right. Yep. And then there's a good share of family stuff. I'm I'm not I don't share like pictures of my family on Twitter. Um, for the most part, like if I share pictures of my kids, it's not usually like their total selves, like it's the back of their head or whatever. <laughs> and I think that's just like protecting my little kids. You know, I don't right. I don't really share pictures of them unless it's like with family. Oh, of course. But I'll mostly share, share stuff like funny things they say, which is just yeah. you know chock full. And I and I honestly right. like have a laundry list in my Twitter drafts of just funny things they say, and I just have I just wait to kind of post them. <laughs> uh, is there anything that comes to mind? Is there a draft you can share, or like a favorite favorite dad life tweet of yours of all time that you can share? I mean, I had I had one that was picked up by BuzzFeed. <laughs> It was just after we had our third in February, and I, I can't remember the exact verbatim, but it was uh, most people, when they go to bed, say good night. Um, when you have three kids under five, you say good luck <laughs> to your spouse. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. My, my kids are just saying funny stuff all the time. Yeah. So it's, it's hard to kind of choose a, a specific one. I loved when I... There was one Saturday morning that it was just my wife had taken the baby. I think the baby was asleep and she had taken the, the middle kid to, to out with her to do something. And so it was just mm-hmm. me and my oldest and he's five. And I said, okay, buddy, it's just you and dad time. What do you want to do? And he said, I want to turn on Eye of the Tiger and run on the treadmill. And I was like, <laughs> okay. That's amazing. Let's do that. <laughs> it read your mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's so fun. Like there's, it's fun to share moments with them. Like, and we love to travel with them and like, um, you know, I'm kind of going to a tangent of being a dad, but <laughs> wait, you're a dad. We went to San Francisco last year and I go there all the time for work. And so it was fun to bring the family. And the first time they, they heard that, that trolley bell because Um, inside out the movie inside out was kind of their favorite at the time and that's based in san francisco yeah it was just like 
the light in their eyes and the excitement was something I'd never seen before. And it was just so cool <laughs> to kind of experience that. Yeah. <laughs> and then I also just like to be transparent with like strategy. You know, I, I share a lot of lists on stuff, um, tools I use and strategies I implement and marketing that I think is cool. Like I just really, really like to kind of share things that I think are interesting and, and I feel like people appreciate that. And it's been fun to kind of yourself included, but it's been fun to kind of have this little bit of a community where a bunch of the same people will kind of engage with stuff I put out. And so we kind of mm -hmm. have this group where we, we share and, and comment on each other's stuff and we kind of have some fun back and forth. And that's just, it's it's fun. I, I I enjoy it, and I enjoy when I'm able to kind of meet people in real life. Mostly, you know, it's usually at conferences or whatever. But anytime I'm going somewhere for a conference or something, I'll kind of throw it out there. And, and if people want to meet up, you know, I'd love to. I love to meet people in real life. So, right, yeah, it's all about the fun. And yeah, as I mentioned before, once Adobe changes Adobe Max to Adobe Max Branstead, or I'm going to fly out there. And probably <laughs> probably be the keynote speaker. I think, would love that. I'd I think that kind of kind of goes without saying, but yeah, no, we'll have to meet in person uh, at some point in the future. But yeah, absolutely I appreciate how transparent you are with all that stuff on Twitter, and also it's the mix of business and and family content. I think if anybody listening um, has some concerns about having kids or doesn't have kids yet, not really, they're kind of on the fence about it. I think you've absolutely sold them because your kids can not only be your kids, they can also be your focus groups. They can also be your content <laughs> creation team. Totally. Yeah. They can be your daily inspiration. So I think they're great business partners in general, which kind of gets overlooked. Exactly. <laughs> Endless content from little kids. <laughs> Endless. Endless. <laughs> okay. So let's shift gears here. We're going to go to a recurring segment here called the Wild Business Shoutout of the Week. The Wild Business Shoutout of the Week. <laughs> wild Business Shoutout of the Week. This is when we talk about a recent marketing campaign or creative campaign that caught our attention and get our takes on it. So there was something recently that a certain popular brand of candy did for Halloween. Joe, can you talk a little bit about that campaign and your thoughts on it? Yeah, I absolutely love this. I, I saw it on Twitter the morning. I think it was the morning of Halloween. It was just one of those trending stories or whatever. And my favorite candy anyway, Reese's, had put up a vending machine in New York and the vending machine would exchange your garbage candy, which I created kind of a fun debate on Halloween. I don't know if you saw this, but there's yeah. a lot of passionate people about candy corn. Oh my God. I, I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm passionate on the negative side on that. By okay, the way. good. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I had a list and, and I said my favorite candy is one through five. And then I said 9,999 candy corn. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Throw in all your candy corn into this vending machine and it'll give you a nice Reese's in return. <laughs> so, I mean, that's so, so fun, right? It's guerrilla marketing. It's viral mm -hmm. opportunity. It creates some, some customer engagement and it, and it creates a social moment. I mean, it was just super cool to see. What, what did you think about it? Right. Yeah. And what's the, like for anybody that hasn't seen it yet, I mean, we'll be sure to include it in the show notes and everything, but I think they called it the candy converter or something like yeah, that. I think that's what it is. Yeah. And at its core, it's any candy that you got because everybody has those memories when they're younger of going trick or treating or some of us who still trick or treat, you know, not to brag, uh, who go to different houses, get their candy. And then you look and you're like, uh, a third, maybe half of this is like stuff. I'm not even interested in the first place. Like, Oh, this, you know, why, why is there so much candy corn? <laughs> and yeah. uh, Reese's had this idea. They basically put vending machines out there where you could put that in changes to Reese's cups, which I mean, and I have a lot of sympathy for like my brother's got a peanut allergy and there's a lot of allergies out there, but for anybody that loves Reese's like this is a dream come true because <laughs> you can really, you can take whatever, you know, take your candy corn and turn it into that. I just thought it was so clever because it was one of those campaigns that you saw and you thought, oh my God, how has nobody done this before? Or like, why, right. didn't, I th why didn't I think of that? And I think those are some of the best, most creative campaigns and, and ideas is when you think like, oh, like why? <laughs> like somebody could have, should have done this a long time ago. And that's when you know it's good because it's just naturally like 
an aha, you know, brilliant, brilliant thing there. So I wish I didn't see any here. I don't know if they just didn't drop them around the streets of New York or what. I didn't see any. Um, I also, you know, haven't trick or treated in quite a bit, but uh, I was hoping to get to see one in person. Maybe, maybe after hearing this, Reese's will will send a one to uh, in my studio here. <laughs> I wonder if it was close to to closer to Hershey, Pennsylvania. Oh, it could be. That would just make too much sense. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot. I I'm just I'm constantly amazed and inspired by all the creative guerrilla and viral marketing campaigns there. So that's I'm really glad you brought that one up because that is. Uh, especially with Halloween being recently, that is totally top of mind. And we actually, shameless plug, I actually, we curate all these creative marketing campaigns from around the web and in our e-newsletter every single week. So um, we love those campaigns and we know other people do. So we're trying to make it easier for everybody to get those in one place. All right, so let's get to a quicker one here called The Unusual. This is all about the unusual things in your life. And, and you're not alone. I'm probably more unusual than everyone. Uh, <laughs> pet peeves, quirks, weird talents. First question there. What's your biggest pet peeve? I'm, I'm kind of pretty easygoing. Uh, <laughs> my wife, my wife calls me Switzerland a lot. Like I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm neutral on a lot of things. <laughs> which Come is on, really Switzerland. Good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so you're a huge Roger Federer fan then I'm guessing. Yeah, totally. Love <laughs> Here, here's one though. So I don't know if you get this out East coast, but like Utah for sure. And I've heard it on the West coast as well. People call the store Nordstrom's. Mm -hmm. Oh, Nordstrom. Yeah. Yeah. The S on the end. So it's yes. like, it's not Nordstrom's unless you're saying like, I'm going to go buy some Nordstrom's pants. Right. <laughs> but if you're right. just saying like, I'm going to Nordstrom's like, no, that's, that's wrong. Right. That's so true. Yeah, I think I think everybody's like I think a lot of people don't think about it. It kind of feels like there's an S on the end, but right? Yeah, I guess I guess not. <laughs> unless you got unless you got like a friend named Nordstrom, and you're like, oh, you want to go hang out at Nordstrom's house? <laughs> <laughs> right. That's so true. Yeah, that's definitely not limited to uh, Utah. We see that all the time out here as well. I mean, hear that all the time out here. <laughs> I have no idea why that bugs me so much, but it does. So that's, yeah, that's well, think well, I'll, I'll make sure to not call you Joe's. For the rest of the interview. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> How about weird talents? You got any weird talents? Like, for example, I can, uh, you know, some people can like curl their tongue. Like, I can make like a an M shape with my tongue for whatever reason. Which, not that, not, not that that like has any value in the real world, but yeah. Uh, any sort of weird tricks you can do like that? Oh man, I I don't know if this is like a if most people can do this or not, but me and my kids love to do the hitchhiker toe. <laughs> where you just like point your toe your big toe way up and your rest of your toes are down <laughs> so try you do, give that, that a try that's kind of fun is that how you say hi to each other <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm trying it now i'll have to i'll have to record it but <laughs> how about how about quirks anything uh so i guess i guess being nicknamed switzerland by your wife would be one but yeah <laughs> anything or like habit you have or a thing that you do that your wife or somebody's called you out on is kind of like, why do you do that? Or things like that. I've like um, endless. I list. mean, so, so I have a, I have a bit of a saying with my jokes. Most of them don't land at my house, but they, <laughs> they can't, they can't all be home runs, right? You got to have some base hits, some, right? Some foul balls, some strikeouts, right? That sounds a lot like my baseball career. <laughs> so, <laughs> Twitter sees Twitter sees probably my best stuff, but my family sees you know everything. So uh, they're not all base they're not all base hits at my house. That's for sure. Right. <laughs> that's so true. You need people. Yeah. Well, it's great that social media can be a platform, and I feel like Instagram is like that even more than Twitter. Like Twitter, it's I guess you can be more active there than on Instagram. And Instagram, kind of everybody's had this long running joke that it's like it's like you it's like the museum of you or like it's only your best stuff and so it's really you really appreciate it when you get to see somebody's side that is their bad jokes and their dad jokes and so so keep the bad jokes coming joe we appreciate them <laughs> I, I had a really good dad joke this morning that i text to my wife cuz she was she was working out and so she wasn't around to hear it <laughs> my son's been having you know runny nose really bad and he's he's the 3 year old and 
So he says, dad, can I have a tissue? I have stuff coming out of my nose. And I said, Hey buddy, there aren't any more. You blew through them all. (laughs) (laughs) Did did your wife laugh or she just, she she thought that was funny. Yeah. She was just like, that was a good one. I texted to her. So she knew (laughs) that she missed a great, I love them. I feel like, well, I think that's (laughs) one of the um, side effects. One of the things that's come out from this, you know, the, the blowing up of social media over the past decade is people who like dad jokes have kind of created that community. And I think Buzzfeed's a great spot for them as you know, as well, but I think they've kind of brought to light that there's, there's kind of like this love or affinity for dad jokes and well, even the dad bod, that was a whole thing, but like dad culture and, and dad jokes um, specifically, there's a whole community out there. People just love them and endless uh, want an endless run of them. And I think that's part of why your, your Twitter has become so popular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fun. It's fun to kind of see. I love, I mean, I love looking through those Buzzfeed yeah. parents and dads and, and I mean, they've got a million lists that are just hilarious when you look at kind of right. tweet. Like literally a million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's kind of, those things have all shaped like what I, what I think will be potential for a viral thing or not. Mm, yeah I've, I've had a few that have gone kind of nuts this year yeah you know it's kind of like timing and the right phrasing and and you just kind of get better at it but it's been it's kind of fun to, to create that one that goes crazy right do you have any like i saw some stat i don't know the specific but like the next generation like generations i guess probably what your what your kids would be in yeah yeah the younger generation like a, such a high percentage of them like want to be an influencer and want to go viral, which uh, I'm assuming that will only increase over time. Like it's important to have your boundaries with social media, obviously, but you know, everybody wants their five seconds, 15 seconds of fame, whatever. Do you have any tips for anybody that wants to go viral? Like, <laughs> I know it's kind of a tough thing to, you can't really plan it too well, but from your experience getting picked up, like what worked for you well then? Yeah. So, I mean, with Twitter, it's, it's all about following the hashtags or yeah. even keywords that are trending and also understanding when there are just built in big moments. Like I had one this year that was the Olympics. It, it was kind of something that just came to me during the moment, but it was kind of after I had read a few of the other things that people were saying, I thought of something funny, but it was, you know, when Sean white won the gold, obviously the Olympics was a huge Twitter fest, you know, millions of tweets. So <laughs> lots of eyes on it. Right. Sean White was trending like even leading up to the half pipe gold event. And so I said, you know, watching Sean White win nothing four years ago and win gold in Korea has really inspired me to to hit the spreadsheets hard tomorrow or something like that. You know, that was something that was like right. <laughs> brought it to real life. Like People right. that are that are watching the Olympics are just regular people, and they're just going to go to their nine to five job tomorrow, and they're just kind of enjoy this moment for the moment. That's real. It's, it's real. <laughs> right? so that's why uh, that was uh, you know hashtag relatable, as the kids say. Yeah, yeah. So like that just went that went viral, and I think I think there's stuff like that that it's like not everybody's going to enjoy like the dad stuff I put out because not everybody's a dad, and people just may not relate to that as much. But there's a there's a strong enough community in whatever phase of life you're going through that if you can kind of come up with something clever that probably everybody else is going through or a thought that everybody else is having, then there's a high chance that that will, you know, have some juice behind it. Yeah. And then you also just I think you have to practice and you know this, like you a lot of things will fall flat. And so you'll kind of see what right. works and doesn't work and then occasionally you'll have that you'll have that awesome opportunity where like elon musk is you know smoking weed on a podcast with joe rogan (laughs) and it's like oh man i've got the perfect perfect gif for this that i've been kind of thinking about and (laughs) i had i actually had a tweet that went viral at that moment you know so oh i remember that one (laughs) (laughs) so it's like that just kind of came to me i was like I could do, you know, Doc Brown coming out of the the smoke filled DeLorean and kind of <laughs> have that be called Elon Musk and that yeah, coming out of his Tesla, <laughs> right? So like, I don't know. It's just kind of 
comes with experience, I guess, that you just start to think in a way that Twitter might respond well to it. And yeah. sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but yeah, for the well, I think, part, I think we're going to have a record number of people going viral. Um, the week we release this because all of our listeners will go viral at the same oh, exact time and it's going yeah. to be great. But I think that's the price of admission for content and Huber in this world is that you have to accept that a lot of your stuff is going to fall flat and you, but you have to put yourself out there or else nothing's going to get out there. So it's like, yep. you have to, you have to train yourself to kind of get used to like, okay, you tweet something or, or post something and it doesn't get the pickup that you expect or like people don't get your joke. Like you have to accept that because it's, it's just sometimes it takes more at bats and uh, and foul tips and strikeouts, as you mentioned. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and I'll be and I'll be home runs. Yes, exactly. All right, uh, some rapid fire Q and A real quick to wrap up. You ready for it? Yep. Cool. Okay. What is your favorite Halloween candy other than Reese's? Oh, Sour Patch Kids. Ooh, very sour answer there. Okay, fa- <laughs> favorite show that you're watching right now. Um, I love, I love this is us on NBC. Yes. Yeah. It's just real. I, l- I enjoy watching it with my wife. It's something that we both like. So yeah, I have tears in my eyes. But <laughs> how about favorite movie? I mean, it's, it's gotta be dumb and dumber, right? I mean, that's, <laughs> it's gotta be dumb and dumber. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many. I still I start quoting it right now for you. The I whole still thing. crack up from, from scenes from that. Um, and every now and then I still see the, uh, the image of him in the bathroom when he has uh, consumed the laxative, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about favorite? I know you travel quite a bit for work. What's your favorite place you've ever traveled to? That's a, that's a good question too. So I, I think there's a couple. So I went to Orlando with my, with my kids and that was awesome. I think they're, they're kind of different is, is why I'm going to give you a few. So <laughs> okay. I spoke in Orlando and brought my family with me and that was just awesome. It was the first trip I really had my family with me. So that was just a lot of fun to go to Disney with them. Mm-hmm. My, probably my biggest surprise was Pittsburgh. Yeah. I, I'd never been there before. I went there to go to Carnegie Mellon last year and it was awesome. Totally unexpected. Like I got, you know, it's such a far away from the airport that I got a, a good 45 minute kind of history from the uber driver um, which was great like i there's was, a lot of stealers and steel talk yeah yeah and it was just kind of cool how to see right. how they've transformed from steel to tech and how you know they've got three great universities right there in the city and yeah um, that was that was probably the biggest surprise and then the biggest one that i knew was going to be amazing was was going up to canada it was my first time really in Canada. I went up to Vancouver and spoke at a conference in like an hour outside of Vancouver and then skied up at Whistler oh, for nice. a couple of days. And that was just awesome. It was super fun. Yeah. And I, I'm totally with you on Pittsburgh. So I'm from Cleveland. So it pains me as a Browns fan to say Pittsburgh, but <laughs> no, I, and I have cousins there. Shout out the Habers and been there plenty of times. And it's a really beautiful city. Like I think it, it totally probably people don't visit it nearly enough as they should yeah. the way that it's, you know, it's got the three rivers around it and this city in the center of everything. Like it's really beautiful. It's a cool city. Yeah. It was super it's cool. Neat. Yeah. Um, okay. Last question. Do you have a favorite person that you follow on Twitter other than yourself? I know you probably got like thousands of burner accounts. You follow yourself and stuff. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm going to have to say like my Adobe friends and that's just cause we <laughs> work together yeah. so much that we like, I troll people a lot because <laughs> you know, we have so many inside jokes because we're all together you now 40, right. 40 hours a week and we kind of go through all the conference time at max. And so you kind of build that rapport with people. But right. there was one guy who I sit right next to. His name's Mark Booth. Uh, shout out at, at Mark Booth. <laughs> but he runs our experience cloud social. And when I was growing my man bun, um, for the last year and a half, which was a journey on its own. I pretty much just put stuff out on Twitter just to troll him and, <laughs> because he hated the man bun. And oh, I just God. thought it was so much fun uh, to kind of mess with him anytime I, yeah. anytime I thought of a fun way to show my man bun. Oh my God. Well, we'll have to do, uh, we'll have to do a round two sometime to talk about your different hairstyles. Cause I know that's been a, quite the journey in itself. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, Joe, thank you so much for uh, the taking time out of your day 
to uh, come on the podcast and talk about your journey and talk about your personal brand, about Adobe, about your kids and their focus groups and, and all that. But thank you so much. It's been a blast. Where is the best place for people to connect you uh, with social media and uh, any other, any else, anything else you want to shout out? Twitter and LinkedIn are probably the best. Okay. LinkedIn. So you're, you're Joe Martin on LinkedIn, Joe D Marty on Twitter. And now the stage is yours to wrap up. Any final thoughts to send us off here? Stage is yours. Yeah. I mean, it's great to chat with you. Just a great to connect with people. I always love to talk and, and, you know, learn, learn different points of view. I kind of appreciate a couple of things you threw in there through the conversation and thank you. <laughs> yeah. Just love to talk to people on Twitter and, and LinkedIn. So connect with me there. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much, Joe. Uh, and good luck with your future hairstyles. <laughs> <laughs>